Hello. Um, I think we're live. My name is Matt. I am here uh, on the Amazon, on the My Amazon Guy PPC podcast, live Q&A with Jason and myself, although I'm not sure where Jason is. I'll be honest with you. So let me see if I can um, figure out how to get access to the questions and run it here. And we'll just go from there. I apologize for the little bit of the rough, uh, rough start here. <laughs> I love there we are. <laughs> I was like, there we are. All right. Question. I've seen questions coming now. I was like, oh, boy, I'm going to have to drive this thing and answer questions at the same time. I only see one question. Oh, I boy. Karen. Hey, Karen. Karan, I'm Tuesday, sorry. Huh? How are you, sir? I was, I was here we are. Let's see. Sorry, I'm not set up at all. I just got out of a, a call. Um, <laughs> hi, this is the, uh, the the My Amazon Guy Tuesday podcast. We got <laughs> I wasn't even sure if I was in the right place. I was like, special guest Matthew Davis, <laughs> special guest <laughs> Jason. Uh, we are here today. This shirt is so apropos, by the way, for that start. Can I just show this really quick? <laughs> Perfect. I promise you that was not planned. That just it just worked out that way. What's um, what's the big topic this week, Matt? I mean, I think sponsor. There's a lot happening. I think sponsor TV and streaming TV uh, as a uh, uniform product type is certainly exciting for uh, us PPC nerds in the space. And I think also certainly, um, you know, as we were talking about internally a lot here yesterday, uh, the the bid structure. Um, now, now allowing day parting. Um, I think that's, you know, that's obviously a huge thing. We were wondering for over a year when it was going to sort of become standard practice and we weren't going to have to use, you know, an integration or, a, you know, or a third party software or something to do um, day parting with bid updates. And now it's here. So uh, I certainly think that that's, yeah, no, day parting. Yeah, for sure. So I think that those are the two sort of exciting things, at least from a PPC, strictly PPC perspective. And then obviously, right, like we're coming into, uh, you know, the exciting time of year seasonally, right, with Black Friday and Christmas shopping, obviously it's the biggest time of year for really all of e-commerce advertisers, but particularly for us Amazon advertisers. So. Every We've been talking about day parting so much. Every time I hear, I, I, I for some reason, I think of... Um, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. <laughs> if you ever watch that show, but I did. there's a there's a character Charlie plays called Dayman. You know, and <laughs> I don't think I saw that episode. It's like Dayman. Ah. <laughs> um. Yeah. So I mean, certainly day parting and how that's going to integrate. You know, because um, with all of the sort of automated bid um, behaviors on Amazon, they're um, they are synchronous, synchro, I'm not saying that right. They all inform each other, right? So that's what I'm trying to say. So like if you do, you know, a scheduled bidding, um, with, you know, a top of search adjustment, um, those will play off each other. And I think that, you know, it's still unclear. We haven't really had enough time to test how that will impact, right? Like a day parting bid update with a top of search or with a product page adjustment and what does that do for uh, you know different advertisers in different spaces how does that make them how does that allow them to more effectively reach the best traffic possible um, well, yes karen has a question can we add text to oh. list <laughs> wasn't this <laughs> isn't this a ppc podcast <laughs> I'm just kidding. Go, Jason. That's that's you, man. Uh, let's see. Oh, there is a. All right. So yeah, I mean, you have to do it right, though. Um, I just put in pet odor eliminator. You'll see here on this Febreze one. So they've added text. Uh, this three pack does not come with this like little banner at all. Um, this is all looks like uh what's it called um 3d rendered um but yeah they've got text here the key here is to make it look like it is part of the product so 
So let's see if we can find anything else in here. There were some really funny ones I saw the other day where they just like. So here's a here's one that's kind of on the fence. Obviously, this sticker doesn't come on here. So this is an example of where something might get uh, suppressed. And all you would do is kind of move that sticker over a little bit and make it a little bit smaller so that it looks like it's on the packaging. Um, but yeah, to answer your question, it's uh, go to my Amazon guy slash com slash CTR. And you can take a look at some of the uh, things you can do here. Hit this cooking, baking cooking sheet. One is a really cool one. Morning. Oh, hey, you know what? I get it. I'm talking to I'm talking to um, Brandon here shortly, right? Pretty sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll see you. I'll see you in an hour, Brandon. <laughs> here you go, Matt. Oh no, that's a vine question. <laughs> you got oh, this though. <laughs> you you're on it. Happy Tuesday. If I enroll in three non-parented products in Vine and then after enrollment parent them together, will I still get the 90 reviews total or should I wait until I get 30 for all three before parenting? So um, we usually wait here in this situation for them to get claimed. And then you should be able to parent once they're all claimed and then um, uh, you'll be able to get the reviews. Pretty sure. So... Well, what else is really cool that's happening? I know you mentioned, um, <laughs> I know you I mentioned mean, the TV ads. We, yeah. we, we've, we've been in a lot of uh, beta for this, uh, different things with Amazon. They really talked about this at Amazon Accelerate. They were pushing it. Um, what do you think the future is of streaming ads for products, uh, let's just say normal brands on Amazon. I mean, I think it is the future and I don't think that I'm saying anything really that novel when I say that creative is, is where the industry is headed. Um, you know, it's, it's not a coincidence that sponsor TV, uh, is now, a you know, a uniform product type uh, for, for ad offerings for campaign types. Right. Um, Is that me or you? Not me. All right. So going off with Matt said, all right, here we are. Here's a fire TV. It's not black Friday yet. It's a 32 inch, not very big, but, um, for 50% off, uh, normally 200 bucks right now it's 109. They haven't connected their brand node. This I love it. When I find Amazon, I apologize. I'm not sure where that was coming from. So this is like Matt said, this is the future. They're going to get these giant, this isn't a giant one, but they're going to get these cheap giant branded TVs, which has already been happening. They're going to get them into people's houses. They've got Alexa on them or whatever else. And pretty soon they're already doing it right here. You're going to start seeing instead of an ad for Jack Ryan, you're going to see an ad for Celsius drinks. And it's going to be like, whoa, I was just talking about the room. Uh, smells funny. I should get some Febreze. And there it is right there. And this is connected to your Amazon account. And you got your little remote in your hand. Or you can talk into your remote and say, eh, add to cart. Bam. Right. Uh, now this isn't a video ad. We were talking about video ads, but yeah, and I and I do think that right, it's it's going to be displayed largely the same way, right? Like, um, you know, the numbers that uh, that they were saying, you know, at Amazon Accelerate, really everywhere you everywhere you go, if you sort of read in Amazon circles, right, um, is the influx of streaming devices into people's homes, right, and how many more of us have streaming devices versus even four or five years ago, right? Um, I don't, again, I don't think I'm saying anything novel, right? Cable's kind of dying. Streaming TV is sort of the future, 
right? Uh, obviously, advertisers are going to try and take advantage of that. And, um, you know, Amazon is certainly no exception. Um, so, you know, I, we're actually uh, just looking at some of the things that um, that you should be thinking about as an advertiser, right? So you say, OK, I want to get started with, you know, sponsor TV ads. Like, what what does that look like? Um, and, you know, I think that fortunately we have video type product types on Amazon to start. And, and this is kind of where it's sort of good that Amazon is kind of highly regulated. Sometimes it's, you know, you, you wish they weren't so regulated and you had sort of more freedom to run your page and your brand your way. But when it comes to like dipping your toe into the creative waters, it's kind of good that they're, that they sort of like force you into a lane. Right. Um, so, you know, look at some of the things that work for, your sponsor brand videos, right? So your sponsor display videos. Um, and just in terms of audience targeting, right? In terms of how you set that up and how you get started. Um, that's sort of been the consensus in terms of where to start in terms of like, okay, well, how do I, how do I target this and how do I build this out effectively? Um, I haven't had a chance to go in there and actually build a live one for a client yet. So, but I've been watching uh, some of the others, some the perpetual webinar and some of the others talk about it. Um, and that seems to be the consensus is to build your audience based off of some of the data sets that you may have from some of your other video types. You're going to get one of these, uh, big giant TVs with a bunch of bloatware installed in it. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Alpha Mentality says, so my brand name got hijacked on my listing on Amazon. They can now make changes on my listing, change my title. Is trademark and brand registry the way to go to, to be sure the hijacker gets shut down and can't hijack my listing again in the future? Well, I mean, if you don't have a trademark, that's not your brand name. <laughs> uh, yeah, so definitely get a trademark, but uh, you better hope that somebody didn't hijack that as well and buy it before you and you're going to be uh changing your brand name all right <laughs> sorry for changing the topic no problem but we i today is weird we i guess we just don't have a topic we're talking about tv and uh, did you watch uh i forget matt you watch football or not i do watch football yes sir did you watch buffalo choke last night yeah, that was uh, that was surprising. I don't know what uh, what's happening with their offense. I feel bad for uh, for Diggs there. Um, <laughs> Karen said yeah. he, he says saw Matt on the thumbnail. <laughs> That's <laughs> my, me and Karen. Me and Karen go way back. Um, hey, I want to. Oh, sorry. no, go ahead. I was just gonna say. Share my screen. I can with you. <clears throat> um let's go window this guy share can everybody see this there you go so this is just kind of going off of um what we were talking about earlier right which is um this is just a more sort of structured view of sort of what i was talking about about how you might set up your streaming video ads um you know start with your mediums that you know, right? Sponsor brand video, um, informed from what you've learned from your previous structures, right? Um, what, and then observe what it does, right? Does it help your engagement? Does it help your traffic? What does it do to your overall sales, right? And then you progress to sponsor TV. Um, you know, sponsor TV is gonna be, I think a higher barrier to entry typically, right? Like there's gonna be, um, I know that there's higher standards for creative, meaning um, what you what they'll run on TV, it, it has to be a higher level of creative content, um, both in the quality and the content itself. Um, you can go to Amazon TOS to get a sort of detailed breakdown of what they'll look for. But it is a higher a higher uh, brand of uh, sort of, excuse me, barrier to entry. Um, and then you can use, you know, Amazon Marketing Cloud to evaluate and refine. So I just want to share that with you. Did you have a question coming? I got you. Hold on. All right. <clears throat> Josh says, I have a particular competitor product that is similar that I want to target aggressively for my product launch. 
What mm -hmm. would you advise? I really want to get as many of their sales as possible. Oh, I love it. The, the aggressive CEO that's, that's going after. Um, I would, I would advise to, to tread cautiously here. So it sort of depends on what their current. So is your competitor, like what's their current standing in the marketplace, right? Like who are they? Right. Like, um, you know, to use, uh, to use NFL parlance, right. Is, are you going after the Kansas city chiefs right now? Right. Maybe you don't want to take them on directly when you're like an expansion team. Um, I know that's a rough analogy, right. But what I'm saying is how many reviews do they have? Are they good reviews? Right. Does it look like they have a lot of, um, product engagement, right? Like, um, how does their listing look? Does it look really well done? Um, if you're, and, and what is your listing right? like right is so if it's um is your product new is it are you just starting it yesterday or hey your product's been around a little bit it's had a chance to um stack sales it's got you know a review history that's positive um it's also you know you've done your a b testing and you've got some polished images there and you've got a pretty polished listing yourself right um you can certainly test it right like i'm you know those of you guys who followed me since the, you know back in the day right um target liberally, bid conservatively. So I'm always a fan of, right? That's how we learn is through testing and engagement. Um, so I would certainly recommend that you test, but you might want to be ready to do like a, ca a filtered category target or something that's not directly targeting them if they are the heavyweight champ of the brand, right? So, or of your category space, right? So if it's, if you're selling running shoes and you're going after Nike, you have to let the data lead you a little bit in terms of like, if you're, you can certainly product target them directly. There's a number of ways, right? If, if Josh, if you're asking like, what are the tactics? Like what are the levers I pull on? I mean, right. Direct product targeting, you can target their branded search. Um, there's a number of ways to do it. You can write uh, in, in certain campaigns where you can do um, interest layering or things like that. You can target similar demographics, right? But for the most part, it's either targeting their branded search or targeting their products directly. Um, their brand or their brand store or their individual listings directly. Um, let the data guide you is what I would say, right? Like if you target them directly and the conversion does not pan out and it shows that you're getting your tail kicked, that means that you need to, not that you won't ever get there, but you need to figure out why that is, right? Do I have, maybe I need more conversions, right? Maybe I need to um, continue to increase my organic ranking in related search terms. So you can sort of you know, sort of eat around the edges, right? Um, if there are other keywords that are maybe not branded that you're both competing for, but maybe, you know, they're not focused on some terms as heavily as you are, um, those can be avenues where you can, right? And again, at the end of the day, the algorithm's a conversion engine. So you just want to hit that pedal with a successful conversion. The more times you hit that pedal at a higher rate, the more competitive you'll be. And if you do that effectively over time, even if you can't, like directly go after them right away and win eventually you can with a, with enough successful conversions right but so let 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 the the ctr and conversion percentage in particular are the two stats that you'd want to watch so certainly set up a test right um this is you know fourth grade science fair we want to set up our our scientific experiment right we have our hypothesis i can kick this competitor's tail right we're going to set up an experiment an ad experiment to run our hypothesis and then we're going to let the date we're going to review the data and then suggest matt why would it be a, a bad idea to just slam a ton of sd ads on a brand new product on something that's established because at the end of the day ultimately you're a conversion it's a conversion engine right so the the idea that the more engagement i get equals better organic ranking is a fallacy right the more engagement i get plus or times a certain reasonable conversion percentage equals the higher organic ranking I get, right? Um, you have to convert at a reasonable percentage. If you don't, it can actually have the opposite effect, right? Because again, Amazon's, what Amazon cares about is the end user consumer experience. They don't care about you as the seller. They certainly don't care about us as the marketers, right? The reason, and they understand this very clearly, the reason that anytime you're going to buy something retail, you're going to go to Amazon first is because, you know, as a consumer, that is the best place to go for me to most likely find the most competitive products in terms of selection, 
price, shipping and convenience. If I don't like it, I know they'll take it back. No questions asked. Right. So I'm going to go there. Um, so the idea that if, right, like if I didn't care about conversion as Amazon, right, then any, and I could just buy the, the traffic that I cared about, then your search would be, you know, you wouldn't have effective search on Amazon. It would just be the, the products that paid the most to be there, not necessarily the most relevant to what you're looking for. You'd get frustrated sooner or later and you'd leave. Amazon's fully aware of that, right? So you can't just drive traffic unless you're converting. If you drive traffic without conversion, you will actually hurt your organic rate uh, ranking and likely raise your cost per sale, your cost per acquisition. Because what will happen is the, you're teaching the algorithm that like you keep hitting, you keep force hitting this pedal and you're teaching the algorithm that like consumers don't like you for this, right? We might as brand owners, as, and I've been on the brand owner side, right? So I certainly understand like we love our brand. We want to talk about our brand. We love our products, right? Um, you have to listen to the data because the consumers will tell you what you convert for. If you don't listen, that like ignore that to your peril. I made a uh, I made a LinkedIn post the other day. I'm, I'm just not completely on topic of what we're talking about, but um, I was uh, I was doing a coaching call and um, I was in the the client's account and I was just looking at their sales report, the last sales and traffic report for the last six months, and uh, order total orders was pretty flat. Um, a little peak in prime day, but, uh, randomly in like, I think August or something like that, uh, or September, there was just a huge spike in sessions for like three days, but there was no, there were like gigantic, like a mountain. You could see it on the graph. Mm -hmm. uh, but there was no, uh, extra orders coming in with all that traffic. Hmm. And I'm going, okay, so this has to be, it's not ads related. It has to be outside influence, but you know, why, why didn't it, um, if it was outside influence and we were getting sessions, why didn't those translate to any sales? Um, after some digging, like, cause it kept, uh, I was like, okay, it has to be outside traffic. So I'm like looking to see if they got a viral video or something like that. Um, what happened was their product, their brand, <laughs> Uh, this is, I mean, I'm not hundred percent, but I'm pretty sure like 90%, um, has a very similar name to a movie that came out that weekend. <laughs> and <laughs> so so, a bunch of irrelevant traffic and everybody's like, what is people this? People were searching for this movie and seeing their product and it had nothing to do with their product. <laughs> right. Right. But and... we're on the, we're on the point of irrelevant traffic, right? Yeah. Like... yeah. <laughs> and that's, and that's, and that's a perfect point right now. Now, if the traffic is relevant, right, then you have a conversion problem and you need to figure out what that conversion problem is. And this is sort of, you know, again, anybody that's um, watched me in any of those prior podcasts from years past, right? You want to get specific as an advertiser in terms of what problem you're trying to solve, right? What level of the funnel? Yes, of course, we all want more traffic, more engagement and more sales all the time, right? That's the objective, right? But you might not necessarily be able to hone in and fix all those problems at the same time. And there's with ad accounts, right? As anybody who's done any optimization can tell you, there's endless optimizations. You can, you can optimize all the live long day. You can change all the live long day. There's never, there's never an, uh, an end to the number of buttons to push or, or sort of switches to toggle. Right. So it's very helpful to sort of step back and remind yourself, what am I actually doing here? What problem am I solving? Right. Am I solving a problem of awareness? Do I not have enough impressions for some reason? OK, that will lead me to one set of solutions. Right. So too with engagement clicks. So too with conversion. Conversion is typically as advertisers. That's the one we like least because that's the one that is. Yes, advertising impacts that, but a lot of other things impact conversion, too. Right. All the way down to like how viable is your product, um, whereas particularly with Amazon, where everybody's there to buy something, if it's engagement or traffic awareness right those are easy problems for an advertiser to solve all right we're getting some more questions coming in sweet karen says uh matt any preference on favorite types of sponsor display ads what data has shown to be best there's so many permutations and combinations of yeah, I mean, that's a 
Karen, Karan, you probably know where I'm going. That's an it depends. Um, my personal favorite, I like contextual targeting and, and you know, some of the stuff that they allow you to do with remarketing. But um, let the data guide you, right? Um, again, ask yourself what problem you're trying to solve. Typically with sponsored display, it's a higher funnel play, right? You're, you're, your your point of the sales funnel in terms of your you know your high conversion low cost per acquisition it's almost always like sponsored product manual of something right sponsored display is typically in the engagement or the awareness um, problem solving area of the funnel not always but i don't i don't think there's any specific answer that i can give you that's going to it's going to depend on your product and test a lot right be careful with CPM targeting because that can run away from you. But the key is like with anything in Amazon ads is structure, right? Understand ahead of time, this is what I'm trying to test for, right? This is the audience segment I want to look at. One variable at a time. Everything else you keep consistent, right? With Because you're right, there are so many permutations and combinations. If you go just go in there and dartboard, you're going to, you're going to burn money. That's like going in there into a casino, right? So know ahead of time. All right. What problem, like other than right, like obviously Amazon's got different real estate for each product, each ad type. So of course, if you have the budget, you want to sort of plant your flag in every available, every available real estate spot that you can. Right. But again, especially if you're setting up the sponsor display type that's CPM targeting, right. That's impression share buying rather than cost per click buying. You need to be real careful because those can, as I'm sure you know, right, those costs can run away from you. So just understand what problem you're trying to solve ahead of time and then carefully craft your campaign, right? When you layer your interest, again, solve for one variable. And then when you come back and test, the only thing you're changing is that one variable. Uh, even though I know it can be tempting to like, let me toggle this over here. Let me toggle it, right? Like stick with one variable. If you need to set up another campaign to test another variable, do that. Blaine uh, says, good morning, Jason and Matthew, the original PPC expert from the pioneer days. <laughs> yeah, the I, pioneer left days. I left my pickaxe in the next room. <laughs> I've asked this question almost every panel host except for Matt, so I'm hoping he will have the answer. Blaine, there's no second part of your question here. You need to type it in. I don't yeah, see it. If it got, it might have got filtered if it has a link in it or something like that. Uh, you're going to have to type it out, though, because I don't see anything either. Uh, on either screen let me just double check one second yeah all i see is that this part blaine if you can retype <laughs> roughliner says uh really though use the reports and don't just limit to one competitor use their asin as competitor research for keywords and see where they get their sales it's always good mm -hmm. step one is to optimize the listing image title seo above everything else then ppc runs well and ctr and conversion happens Sounds like uh, it sounds like sounds uh, like you know the play around there. Runners, yeah, Definitely. it's not bad. <laughs> All right, Josh says, uh, would you start with a higher product page bid adjustment? My product quality is legit, way better, and customers can easily tell. My picks and A plus are better as well as title bullets, etc. Only advantage is the competitor has over fifteen hundred reviews. I'll have three hundred reviews at launch because I'm pairing it with my others. I'm sorry, could you go back to the first part of that question? Please? He's launching a new product in a parentage, a variation, a new child. It'll have 300 reviews, competitor has 1,500, but his products are way better. Everything's way better. And he's asking um, if he, he would- Does he want to, like a top of search? Yeah. Yeah, no, I, 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 Josh, I'll be I'll be honest with you. I love the top of search bit adjustment. Um, I think that People shy away from bid adjustments generally um, because it seems hard to sort of quantify the value there. But like it, it'll show you, even if you don't make an adjustment, right? You can go into the placement data in the in the within the campaign, and it'll show you where your your traffic and your your orders are coming from. Um, but particularly in a competitive market where the product offerings are all roughly the same or, you know, perceived to be largely the same by the public. Yeah, it depends, right? Like, you know, if I'm, if I'm searching for energy drink and I'm not brand specific, I'm going to, I'm going to click on the first thing that I see that is, you know, 
relevant to what I'm looking for and within the price that I expect to pay. Um, so yeah, I would say, you know, certainly let the data guide you, as I always say, but I actually favor a lot of times what I'll do is I'll come in with maybe a lower default bid, but then I'll raise the top of search placement specifically. Um, especially if like, you know, if I had an auto campaign or, or something where there was a uh, previous data that indicated that I did, I performed a little bit better top of search. And the other thing, Josh, to watch is the, the difference, the variance in cost per click versus from top of search to rest of search. If you don't have a big jump, then there's almost no reason not to be higher on top of search, right? Like, um, again, look at what the data says in terms of your performance, but I've found a lot of success. Again, it depends on the product, but if you have a solid product offering, right? Again, if you're confident of the conversion, um, there's no reason not to beat your competitors to the punch. And if typically, depending on what your landed cost is and what your margin per unit is, right? Typically another 15 to 15 to 50 cents higher per click to be the very first offering. Usually, usually the economics work out on that, right? Like obviously you want to do the economics in your individual circumstances, say, all right, is that working out for me? How am I converting? How much am I paying per click? Is the juice worth the squeeze? Right. But as a general rule, yeah, like I love top of search placement. I always think it's crazy that uh, I see this all the time where you'll have two very similar long tail keywords on a product, very similar, um, similar search volume. And one of them just absolutely kills it at top of search. And then the other one is, is poo poo. <laughs> yeah and there's no way to you know oftentimes um you can you can predict you can have a prediction right you should have a hypothesis an educated guess but again you have to let you have to be dogmatic to the data like if the data is telling you you don't convert top of search is going to kill you right top yep. of, if you don't convert top of search is going to run your piggy bank dry really fast so if you but if you convert right there's no reason not to be top, especially again like um, you know, uh, I was doing earlier this year, I was doing a lot of wholesale type clients. Well, wholesale, you're offering the same offering as 20 other people. There's no reason not to try and be top of search, right? You want to be the first one that they're going to click. So try it, try it out, see how it does. But I, I think generally, like I've had in both, not just the wholesale, the private label too, I've had success with top of search. Don't go crazy with it, right? Like start with maybe like a 15% jump. Don't do don't start with a 500% jump or something nutty like that, but 900%. I mean, I've seen it. I've seen, I've seen accounts where it's like, all right, Blaine got his uh, question in. All right. An Amazon attribution via PPC, Google ads tracking at the keyword level amped offers this any other competitors or options you can suggest. I want to be able to send traffic from Google to Amazon, know which keywords are converting and which ones are not. I know a place. Go ahead. <laughs> Jump in. Pretty sure Pixel Me does this out of out of Carbon Six. Um, yeah. Um, go to our think, website. We have a referral link. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Perpetua has an offering for this as well. Um, yeah, I'm not, they, we also have a referral link there. <laughs> uh, so, number. Uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure Pixel Me by Carbon Six does it, exactly what you're looking for here. Um, it's straight to Amazon traffic, though. It doesn't do anything for websites. The, I mean, the best I, the best that I've seen personally are always like um, somebody who builds their own dashboard out of out of AMC, um, out of Marketing Cloud. Um, I know that's not really the answer you're looking for, but they're getting better. Have, I know we have some clients using Pixel Me, um, and there's there's good results there, so. Yeah. Uh, that's where I check out Blaine. Josh says that my small and light products now low price FBA rates yep, uh, are being charged different amounts of fees, even though they are the same size price, only different is color. How do I go about fixing that? Well, that's the old Cubiscan. You're going to have to ask them to, for each individual one that's off. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Ask, uh, make a ticket. Walk out there. That's right. I uh, say so Amazon, um, I uh, I believe, uh, or just say Amazon, I'm requesting a Cubiscan on this ASIN. 
Um, that's all you really need to put. And it'll take them a couple of days. You only get, I can't remember anymore, maybe 12 of these a month, 16 of these a month now, somewhere around there. And uh, do be careful. Uh, do I have an example somewhere? Um, yeah, I do. Hold on. Give me one second. So <laughs> if your product comes in a bag like this, for example, it's going to you know, even if your product is smaller than the bag, um, they're going to cube scan and it's going to be these dimensions of the whole bag. You know, that's why you'll see a lot of products that like fold the bag and like tape it or something like that. So ask for a cube scan and um, you'll uh, you'll get your dimensions fixed uh, most of the time. When you do ask for the cube scan, you can also request them to take pictures, which is always fun. Um, cause you see like some like Amazon warehouse worker, like taking cell phone pictures <laughs> of your product in the, uh, laser beam cuba scan machine. There you go. Thomas, Thomas says, uh, dynamic duo returns. <laughs> All right, Trevor, is it worth running multiple automatic SB campaigns for the same product? Yes. Absolutely. Multiple, sorry, SP, sponsored SP product. Campaign. Yes. Automatic SP campaign. Are you kidding me? Yeah, there's like 15 different types. I'm not, I don't, I don't, don't quote me. I don't know if that's the exact number, but there's <laughs> many different types. Um, yeah, Trevor, you want to be doing a variety because, uh, I'll, you know, we've been talking about football. I'll keep it on the football analogy. I apologize for, by the way, for those of you who are international and we're talking sort of American football, but just anybody who follows sports, right? I think we all understand that each role on a sports team there's like a diff they have sort of a different job right like international football you don't judge the goalie by the goalkeeper by the same standards or metrics as the the lead halfback right american football right you have a, a left tackle his job is very different than the quarterback right so so too it is with campaign types right like i was saying earlier right sp versus sb versus sd versus streaming tv and sponsored tv right those don't even appear in the same physical places, right? So that's different real estate. So I can be sponsored rank number one for every SP campaign type there is for keywords I care about. That doesn't touch sponsor. I'll never hit that sponsor brand placement for ads if I'm not running sponsor brands, right? So again, that's why I say target liberally, but bid conservatively. The way you can control your costs is by controlling the number of things you're targeting in a campaign and starting, especially when you start, Right. When the campaign hasn't had a chance to have any interaction yet and hasn't had a chance to index or do anything yet. Um, you start with sort of you lean on the conservative side of bidding. Right. Um, so with SP campaign types. Right. There's an auto campaign. I, I'm a firm believer still to this day that the SP auto campaign is the most powerful campaign type available on Amazon. Period. Full stop. Maybe I'm, I'm sure there there might be. Uh, advertisers and experts out there that would disagree with me. I still think SP auto is the most powerful campaign type, but its job isn't really to convert on an individual behavior, right? It's a fact finding mission that also happens to bring you sales if you set it up right. Um, so SP auto is a great way to generate a search term report and, and figure out, Hey, what are the search behaviors? What are the centers of gravity in terms of awareness and engagement, where are the most clicks, where are the most conversions around what behaviors do I need to care about, right? Some of that is going to be intuitive, right? I'm selling energy, like I know energy drink is going to be a keyword that I'm going to care about with this, right? But does that necessarily mean that there are, did I know every behavior that might be relevant? No. In fact, there's an excellent chance that there are some really potent, relevant behaviors or search behaviors or, or demographics or audiences that I'm not aware of that a search term report will key me into. Right. So auto campaign and then you've got the, the mash types. Right. You've got uh, product targeting. You've got all three. Right. Broad phrase and uh, exact keyword targeting. Um, you've got category targeting. Those are all SP campaigns that do very different things um, that are designed to help grow your sales in different ways. Um, you know, my feeling is budget prohibiting. And again, with the proper structure and proper strategy applied every campaign type that you can have you should have and again the limiting the thing that you use to limit your costs 
is you keep the number of things in each campaign in terms of number of targets down and you keep the bids conservative, especially until you get some data under your belt. Great, Trevor. Thank you, great Matt. question, Trevor. <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, Roughliner says, I need to drive traffic from outside Amazon. Can Mag help me with this? Yep, well, yep. we can help you with um, Pixel Me, and uh, we have uh, uh, UGC and TikTok now. So uh, we'll talk. We're on Google Ads as well, do we not anymore? It, it's it's not true. I mean, it's Pixel Me, so it's it's a little bit different. But yeah, um, I've been I've been I've been out of I've been out of this for a while. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. uh, we could talk about it. Uh, we're we're uh, again we're on a call here in a little bit here, Brandon. All right, uh, back up, Terry. <laughs> hey, back up, Terry. When trying to improve CTR, what is the minimum amount of data you would recommend before choosing a main image? Waiting four weeks or more makes for very slow improvements. There's um, there's no minimum amount of data. Look at what your competitors are doing. We know, even if you run a pick food test or something like that, pay for it. You we know you know which one's going to convert more. Um, you know, let's look at uh, let's just look at something real quick. Um, go ahead, Matt. Well, did you have something? Well, yeah. The other thing I would say is, uh, you know, from an ad perspective, is you don't want to measure time in terms of minutes, hours, and days. You want to measure time in terms of impressions and clicks, right? So, what I would say back up, Terry, is what Jason's saying is right. Like, right? Like the, the easiest answer is run it through a pick food test, and you'll learn in about 10 minutes, right? Um, what image is gonna convert? And, you know, it's the same concept that, that they use for all all data polling, right? You get a certain sample data size that's large enough, you can extrapolate those conclusions to much larger uh, data size samples. So, but with the ads, what I would say is, right? Like, it's more about measuring engagement than than waiting for waiting for time. So if you're like with an ad type, if you're like, hey, you know, how many clicks do I need before I can look at that CTR and view it as relevant? And it's taking too long. Turn up the flow of traffic. Typically, that means raising the bids, right? Go ahead, Jason. Yeah, I mean, it, it, in, a, in, in addition to what Matt's saying, you know, the plain old listing versus something that um, is exactly what the consumer is looking for, you know, um, in this mouthwash one right here, telling you how many pieces are in the image. Um, et cetera, this is going to convert better every single time. Uh, you know, going back to those cookie pans, I mean, we didn't even have to A, B test this one. This, as soon as we uploaded the, the one that says cookie and baking sheets and put some cookies in front of it, it converted better. Right. Uh, you know, same thing with this uh, coconut water here. So, uh, a lot of times your competitors have already done the the testing the for, you. for you yeah and you can yeah. reverse engineer what they do yeah but from an ad perspective right like you know obviously the more data you have the better but um clicks you know uh, impressions and clicks the the you can you can always change the speed at which you're accumulating those based on how aggressively you're bidding Kim says, guys, you recommend running any of the advertising report every day, daily, or summary? Do you add every new day's data to the same Excel sheet and do pivot tables? Oh, man. I got this. <laughs> I got this one. I got this one. Relax. Um, great I'm question. Just, I'm just like imagining <laughs> like, doing Dude, this. Like, as soon as you said Excel, Jason's eyes started to go like this. And hey, pivot tables. hey, I'm fine. I uh, Flat files. All yeah, day long. Yeah, that's Fine. true. You, you are. You're <laughs> that's true. Respect, respect. Um, so, no, Kim. Typically, daily, I think, is a little bit um, too um, too often, only because the attribution windows for most of the ad types you're looking at are anywhere from seven to fourteen days. Now, Amazon typically is going to bring in data much sooner than that, but. I like like the, the the timeline I like best is seven days. But, you know, if you're if you are, especially if you're an enterprise account and you've got a lot of traffic coming through and things are changing very rapidly. You could do it daily, but I mean, typically every 48 to 72 hours should be enough um, because, again, and like I like a look back window that stops 48 or 72 hours prior to now. 
whatever now is. Because again, if it's data, like if I'm pulling data from, from 9 a.m. this morning, I'm not 100% confident. I'm not nearly as confident in that data as data pulled from a week ago, right? Um, because it's just had more chance um, to be corrected, to be looked at, right? Um, so I typically will run anywhere from weekly to bi-weekly, um, but I certainly understand, again, like it depends on, again, start to look at time when you're talking Amazon ads. Don't look at it as like physical time on the clock. Time is measured by engagement, traffic, right? How much traffic is flowing through my ad account at any given time, generating how much engagement, which is going to cost me how much in spend, which is generating how many orders. You get it, right? Um, so, and then, yeah, I do like pivot. I think pivot tables are, that, that's one of the, my favorite things to do with uh, any advertising report is put it into a pivot table um, and see what it can teach you, right? Like that's what we do as Amazon marketers, right? In effect, we're data analysts. And what we're looking for are threads to pull on Anom data anomalies that are either un unreasonably or, or unusually good or unusually bad, right? That's what we're looking for is like, wow, that's, we're really doing terrible over here. Let's go, let's go reverse engineer what the problem is there. Or wow, we're really doing well over here. Let's go reverse engineer what that is and double, triple, quadruple down on it, right? Um, so yeah, definitely pulling in, putting in an Excel sheet and pivot tables again, understand ahead of time what, what question you want answered. Um, but certainly for me, like one of the, one of my favorite new things to do is pull that, um, the hourly campaign report and then put it into a pivot table that you can very quickly apply a little colored heat map to and get a little colored heat uh, application for times of the day that your products sell the most, right? Um, so that's one of my, and it takes five minutes. So yeah, I think that's a great application of it. Every day, I think for most accounts is probably superfluous, but if you are an enterprise level account and you are generating traffic and engagement at that rate, that's it's happening so fast that you feel like Man, if I don't download these reports and update every day, I'm falling behind and I'm going to miss something. Okay, but I would still recommend like having a look back window stoppage like 24 hours at least back, right? So you're at least not trying to pull data that might not be reliable. It might change when you look at it 24 hours later. All done, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> you can tune back in now. David says, uh, how would you do a keyword research for top keywords in Helium 10 or else when your product has three main attributes like gold, diamonds, and solitaire? Great question. Competing products such as gold, diamond, ring, lab grown. Okay, so jewelry is a different beast on Amazon, David. Um, I have a lot of experience here. With Matt mentioned earlier, and you know we've said it a, a bunch of times on the over the years of the podcast. When people go to Amazon, they go to shop. They know what they want. It's specific, right? I'm going. I want a yo-yo. I'm going to go buy a yo-yo on Amazon. I'm not maybe entirely sure which yo-yo I want, but um, you know, I'm going to type in yo-yo, right? When I'm looking for jewelry. I know I want, I mean, I don't wear jewelry, but I'm putting myself in the mind of somebody that's looking for jewelry. And this is just from, God, why does my camera keep doing this? Uh, for, from experience, from you go in your SQP and you're a jewelry seller, it's all over the place. People don't know exactly what they want. They know they want a gold ring with a 14 karat diamond, but they don't know if they want it to, you know, what's, they don't, maybe they put the size in when they type in. Maybe they don't know their size. Maybe um, they're not sure if they want white gold or platinum or all kinds of different crazy stuff, right? So jewelry is absolutely nuts. People that are buying jewelry on Amazon are not going directly to a page and clicking buy it now. They're looking at the entire catalog. And this is why your brand store is so important if you're selling jewelry, handmade, stuff like that, um, where, where they're going to, buy when they see something that catches their eye they're not they don't know exactly what they want and you'll see in jewelry we don't have exact data on it but you can see on websites for sure people will come and look at a piece uh obviously price pay, plays a part if you're selling costume jewelry uh there's not a big decision here but i'm talking anything if it's actual gold silver stuff like that people will put it into their cart and they'll look at it again and they'll go, oh, that's that's the one I really want. And then a month will go by and they'll go, 
oh, I still like that, you know, they make a decision over a long period of time. So advertising on jewelry, I'll let Matt. <laughs> yeah, no, and uh, all that stuff matter, right? Like it's all, it's all symbiotics, right? So all of what Jason said applies here, right? So um, you want to go in terms of what tools to use. Yes, H10, um, you know, AMZ browser, sure. Um, obviously, right? If you've ever watched a mag podcast, you know what I'm about to say, SQP, right? Brand analytics, right? Let brand, let Amazon's data teach you as much as those third parties because it's Amazon's data, right? That's going to be probably really good data. Um, but the other thing I would say is you need to be really careful with this because I would say that, right, typical, typical research strategy would suggest that you focus on the one with the greatest search volume, right? So whether it's like lab grown or gold, or you do your keyword research and go, okay, which of those attributes drives the most volume? And let me focus there. Um, but as Jason was saying, right, depending on a price, anytime you have a price point that's higher than like, you know, to 100, 120 bucks on Amazon, now you get a different, you see in most of the data sets, you see a behavior change, right? People don't impulse buy beyond that level as much. Like Jason said, they'll put it in their cart, they'll think about it. They'll go look at it, you know, at K Jewelers or right. If it's a fridge, they'll, you know, go to a freaking Home Depot and, and compare and, and comparison shop. Right. And then maybe decide a week later that it's the best. So what that means for us as advertisers is we have to put our brand in front of their eyeballs more times on average before we make a sale. Right. So it's where like the energy drink. Right. Again, I know what I want. As soon as I see it, boom, click. The, the behavior is very simple, right? It's as soon as I see it, I'm going to buy it. I probably only need to see your brand a couple of times, once, one to three times before I'm making a purchase if it's a $10 product, right? With a $500 product, I, you know, I probably need to see your brand or your product a dozen times or more. So this is where, going back to some of the earlier questions, right? This is where like an audience targeted sponsored display campaign might be really appropriate, right? Because you're casting a wide net and you understand ahead of time with an audience campaign sponsored display, right? My cost per acquisition will be higher. I'm not expecting a super high conversion. Again, back to that sports team analogy. I'm not expecting my left tackle to throw touchdowns. I'm not judging him on that metric. That's not his job, right? So it depends on what we're trying to do. But I'll tell you, David, and I, you know, again, anybody who's been following me knows that I've been parroting this campaign type a lot recently. It's probably my favorite thing in the world right now, uh, professionally. This, I think, in, in particular with jewelry, is a great sponsored auto gold pan campaign uh, opportunity, a fantastic opportunity, because you don't really know ahead of time, like Jason was, said, was saying, like the specific behaviors that are going to work best for your gold diamond ring, it's hard to say, right? It gonna, it's going to depend on like, well, what does it look like? And like, who does this appeal to most? And is it an engagement ring or is it like a friendship ring? There's all those things that are going to affect the relevancy that if I try and if I try and filter that out by individual keyword targeting, I'll see you in 20 years, David, right? Like, good luck. I hope that your wife, you know, is still with you. It's going to take a long time, right? But if I just cast a wide net, again, as long as I keep my bids really low, then I look at my search term reports and it will tell me the, the algorithm will automatically let, let the machine learning do the work and it will tell me, oh, Gold diamond ring for some reason is getting a lot of clicks, but you know, engagement diamond ring is where I get the most sales. Interesting. And now, now if I want to then take that data and then build targeted keyword campaigns, now I've got some pretty good ammo in my belt, sort of informing my decisions and I'm less likely to scatter my sticks to the wind. Right. But so the key I would say is like with that, right? Like wide net, all the match types, but again, don't listen to the suggested bid, right? Suggested bid, especially for a new campaign, is untrustworthy. Um, bring in those bids really, really low. I'm, I'm, I'm talking stupid low. Um, and then if you come back a day later and it's got five impressions, okay, bring them up 10 cents or 15 cents on each of the match types and then see again. To the point where you're getting a steady clip of impressions that you're happy with. Again, a super wide net auto campaign. You're not expecting it. Sometimes, ironically, it will actually convert and get a lot of orders for you, but you're not expecting it to do that. What you want is it to generate a lot of traffic for cheap 
so that you can then look at that search term report and go, ah, gold diamond ring 14 carat four anniversary is the long tail keyword I need to focus on. Right. But I wouldn't start with a bunch of manual targeting, even if you have compelling helium data, because it's you're you're gonna need to do a lot of touching, right? So that's the other thing is a lot of campaign types. And if you focus too much on the lead, because like manual keyword again is, is the point of that funnel, it's the very bottom of conversion. So yes, you want to have those, and that that is the genesis of where you want to get to. But I don't know if I would start in the early phases focusing a lot of my energy there. I would focus higher up on the funnel. I was, I, I, um, I was trying to find an example while you're talking, but <laughs> I love I love Julia clients. Um, they're really easy to scale as long as they have inventory. <laughs> um, uh, one of the products where a brand is, I mean, brand is always important, but having a, a good brand name and um, building that brand is hyper important for being successful um, on Amazon. Because people don't always want, don't know. I mean, I'm just trying to think like we have one that sells um, necklaces and some of the top converting SQP keywords for the necklaces are bracelet. You would have never thought that, right? Uh, they're trying to find a pair uh, with the bracelet, with the necklace. I don't know, you know, but cool stuff. All right. Uh, Kim says, uh, if you're running multiple auto accounts, uh, I'm guessing auto campaigns for a single product, uh, single campaign, single group, do you sync your negations between them all? I don't. But you, Matt, you're muted. Unless it's like a really oh, agree, okay. egregious yeah, so negation. My question to you would be, why are you running multiple? Uh, are you, are you, is it because you want to segment out the different match types, right? Is it because you want to have one auto campaign for loose match and one auto campaign for Yeah, match? each one's going to perform differently. Um, but yeah, th that that's exactly right. What Jason said, right? Like each, the, the, it's a common misconception that campaigns just because they're targeting the same things in the same ways that they'll perform, perform the same. So campaigns have history the same way a listing does, right? So a mature campaign that's had an opportunity to have potentially thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of interactions with customers is going to behave very differently than a new campaign that you just started yesterday, even if everything in it is identical. You're targeting the exact same stuff with the exact same for the exact same product, bidding at the exact same rates. They're not going to behave the same because Amazon doesn't, independently know oh these these campaigns are related this is the same right like that campaign has to go out into the world and interact with consumers and that's what's going to teach the algorithm right so no you want to do your you want to do your negations i mean you can do them in bulk but based on individualized data from individualized campaigns all right um got a couple more here rosina Mag PPC AMA is is one show not to be seen pre-recorded. Always watch it live. Tons of current value every two. Oh, thanks, Rosina. Appreciate you. Brian says, uh, quick question. Does sponsored display help keyword ranking? Yes. All every conversion, if it was right, like Amazon is going to reverse engineer the search that brought you there, right? And almost all purchases on Amazon start from a search, from a keyword search, right? So even if it wasn't a direct keyword search that brought you there, if it was a product target or something else, right? Um, the It might not help your ranking as directly as a direct keyword target, um, but Amazon is looking, again, what they care about is the best end user experience. So they're looking at, all right, what did this, they're constantly looking at, what did this consumer search? Where did they end up? Did they make a purchase? Yes, no, right? Um, so, yeah, I mean, basically every conversion on Amazon, this is not true on other marketplaces necessarily, right? But because I'm sure there are some of you out there that like go on Amazon and be like, hmm, I'm just going to browse the, the main page today and see what there is to buy. I don't shop like that on Amazon. I think most of us don't shop like that on Amazon, right? Most of us comparison shop, meaning I know I want an energy drink. I know I want a pack of black pens. I'm going to go to Amazon search black pens, right? So almost can... all search originates with a keyword search right almost all of it. you can test this too um 
target yourself with a sponsored display ad. And um, easiest way is just paste your ASIN and search. Click click your sponsored display ad and um, buy the product or whatever. Uh, and then a couple of days later, look in your search query performance and your ASIN will show up. Uh, and you know that it worked. So, and that and and that's a great point, right, Brian? Any any time to to measure how you're doing with keyword ranking, just in general, that's the best place. SQP, the, the search query uh, report in Brand Analytics tab. Um, that is, look, I love all the third party tools, right? Um, Who's slacking you right? Oh, I guess they don't. You. This was a Matt and I. Uh, Someone got, is slacking me right now. We got put on the. We got put on the. I'm gonna the go podcast my, my do not minute. disturb. Oh, it's, it's Francisco. Um, um, MJ, what is a good minimum benchmark search volume for a long tail keyword to be worth targeting as an exact? I covered this on Saturday. Um, it. You could have a very niche product. I, what did I use? I used the re replacement rear view mirror for 1995 Honda Civic. That's not going to have very many search uh, keywords. It's a very exact uh, product um, and it could be worth your while. So there's no minimum uh, search volume for long tail as long as it's relevant and it's getting um, search. Yeah, I mean, the, the relevant search is one, I think. You know, I mean, there's a certain level. Um, but yeah, I get, uh, yeah, but you I mean, need to have a certain level. But, um, you know, if your conversion is really high, like Jason was saying, potentially you only need a few searches. But I wouldn't, you know, again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't presuppose that, hey, this is going to be the long tail that is the money maker for me because I think it's the most relevant for my product. And I know, right? Like I wouldn't start my process that way. I would start my process, I think. I suspect this will be the most relevant long trail keyword for me. I'm going to test it, but over here, I'm also going to have an auto campaign and I'm going to let the search term reports tell me, right? That, you know, they, again, that's, it's the, it's the myopia we as brand owners sometimes engage in where we're like, oh, I know my product and my brand space better than everybody, which is true. Right. But because you know it better than everybody, right? Like what you think might be the most accurate long tail descriptor of your product might not be what the consumer uses to find it. So just keep that in mind. All right. Um, what do we got here? Sorry, we got a few more. All right. <clears throat> I uh, back up Terry. I usually only target a single keyword at a time in broad match campaigns since each keyword can result in many different actual search terms. If my ad is showing on 20 unique or longer tail search terms, how does one effectively optimize the campaign to eliminate waste while still getting the data to find winners? Sorry, can you can you read that one again? I uh, usually only target a single okay. I usually target a single keyword at a time in broad match campaigns. Yes, that's true. If my ad is showing on 20 or longer. So you're saying you're targeting one broad campaign or one broad target, excuse me, one broad keyword. And then when you come in to your search term report, you're finding off of that one broad target is generating longer tail search term. Um, so the way to do that, Terry, is to find the ones that seem to, the data suggests are performing the best, no more than like five or six maximum, right? And you pull those out and put them in a more targeted exact campaign. Um, to answer your question that I know is coming, no, you don't stop running that original broad campaign. You might bid adjust it depending on how it's doing, up or down, right? For optimal performance, you pull out those search terms that you wanna test, Put them in a, in a more targeted campaign, probably exact, but maybe phrased, depending on depending on how your progression funnel is built. Um, but so I put them in an exact campaign again, no more than five or six targets, as as small as one, right? That's what we call a hero, a hero campaign. It's one keyword, one exact keyword targeted, right? And then put that in. Um, you know, the exact because it's exact, the bid ranges will be different, right? Um, than the broad term. So it may be, it will likely in many cases be more expensive, but sometimes not. So set those up. Um, you know, again, I like to come in on the conservative side in terms of the bidding, but 
Some people are more aggressive. It's also going to depend on right on your individual sort of go to market strategy. If you're top line or bottom line oriented. Um, so set those up, um, you know, again, start with if it were me, I'd start with some conservative bids on the on the lower side and then see what they do and bid adjustment. Out. Brian says, you guys have any tips for a product coming off launch? Been running auto campaigns at about 200 percent a cost for a little over a month. If we need to see the product, man, I'll give you a ton of tips. <laughs> um yeah so from an ad perspective brian what i would say is why is it 200 percent a cost right a cost is a trailing indicator a, a cost tells you where you've been so it can be typically a couple of things right either you convert at an okay percentage but your cost per click is too high for your sale price right um so you, you know you can convert at 20 percent, which would be a great conversion rate if you're selling a ten dollar product and it's $3 per click, right? Five clicks is $15, you're underwater, right? So that can be one reason, cost per click is too high, or, right, the conversion is too low for the number of clicks you're getting. Um, so you wanna figure out why that is, right? Obviously, if it's a conversion problem, then you can dig into the search term data, right? Are there specific places where like maybe certain search terms you do really well, and then just it's spending loosely on some bad terms? Or, right, we might have to get into Jason's Ballywick, which is, right, maybe you have a conversion problem because your listing has a number of problems, right? Either the images need updating or needs an SEO facelift or whatever. Heck, it could even be like a catalog or a c category problem. Like, yeah. There's all absolutely. kinds of different issues. Uh, yeah, this I mean, yeah, you could be, right. Yeah, well, yeah I had this... Um, uh, two, uh, it was right before I went on vacation. It was a coach call. They... They're like our campaigns. They're they're going like crazy. We didn't change anything. Uh, there's no new competitors. The price didn't change. Uh, what's going on? And the first thing I saw was uh, they were category orphans. So they had no BSR. So all of their sales were coming just from ads because they couldn't be found organically. <laughs> and I'm like, oh yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> Amazon will kick you out of your category. Sometimes they just delete subcategories or something happens on their end. And all of a sudden, you know, uh, your parentage, like the blue gets kicked out of the category or they'll even change your category from like this happened to uh, calendars. And it was like a coloring thing. And uh, it's supposed to be in the toys and stuff like that. And they moved it to books, which is the most terrible thing that could ever happen to you if uh, you're not an actual book uh, the book category oh my God. yeah don't go there but yeah all kinds of different stuff could be happening here uh we're gonna fire through these last four and then we're gonna have to uh, uh be done for today david says awesome tips guys thanks a lot last question perhaps if i have a long tail keyword that converts as a phrase should i move it to exact if yes my issue is the impression that it's low well why would the impressions be Hello. Um, so yes to this. So there's a couple questions there. Um, yeah, I got so you. impressions could be low for a couple reasons, right? Either there's not a lot of search volume around that specific keyword, um, or your bid needs to go up. Um, that's the other thing. Uh, you know, potentially it could be, I don't think it would be a suppression because if it's running on the other campaigns, it should be fine. But, um, so that's that's what I would say is potentially either the volume for that exact term is low or uh, you have a bid that needs to be more competitive and then scroll to that second question real quick. I think I know it already. Um, and if I, yeah, that is a potential solution. That's, you know, if it's just that, hey, I convert for this specific long tail match um, within a broader right uh, web or we'll call a range of search terms that is getting more volume. That's a potential way to start it. Yeah, is is create that create a quote hero campaign only set it up as a broad match. I would try again. So, David, what I would say is, is your exact campaign that you're running right now how competitive is the bid? Like when you look at the suggested bid and the average cost per click, are you already telling it to bid you way over that? If you're already telling it to bid way over that, then probably upping the bid more isn't gonna change the game. But if you're middle of the range or if you're even low of the range, that will certainly um, change. If you if you make the bid more aggressive, you will get more traffic. Gregor says, hey, guys, nice to see you. Does SB video help with keyword ranking? 
Yes. So yeah, same as SD. The only caveat here that I haven't tested is store spotlight. I'm not sure if it contributes, but just like Matt said, everything, if it converts and it gets you positive uh, influence in the algorithm, it's going to, it's going to yeah. help. Ultimately, it's still going to increase your organic ranking, which is going to drive down your cost per acquisition. All right. One more from David. About to do full SEO work on top selling listing, title bullets, uh, A plus content. My worries is indexing and how long it will take. Should I do it before the holiday month? of December, unless your yeah, unless your listing is completely me messed up or something and you don't think the SEO is good uh, and you don't have a plus content, we're already here, dude. Thanksgiving's next week. Like the, the shop, it's already starting. So I'm, I'm big on no major catalog changes or SEO during pyramid uh, events or seasons or before them. So no big updates. Even yesterday, I told my team, okay, next week, Wednesday, um, we want to make sure we're ready for Cyber Monday, Black Friday, no big SEO updates or anything like that. That can happen afterward or or, or what have you. And um, uh, yeah, I wouldn't change anything right now unless you don't have something. So just like Matt said, focus on strategy, advertising, take adva advantage of the extra traffic that's coming in and, um, and ride the wave. Kim says, thanks for all your help. Usama says, SB and SB don't help with the rankings, but increase in overall sales definitely help. I'm gonna disagree there, Selma, because I've tested SD out. Um, I'll even I know I have a video out there where it shows that uh, that it does index for keywords. Uh, you're talking about ranking, that's a different question, but sales do help with ranking. All right. Um, Matt, thank you for joining us uh, on thank the fly. Yeah. Uh, Matt and I uh, are here uh, filling in and appreciate you all uh, coming in. Tomorrow is Wednesday, so it's ARL with uh, Joe, I think. Yeah, so Joe will be here at 12 uh, noon Eastern. And Thursday, John Aspinall will be here, and Faith and Tom will be on on Friday. And then I'm doing one on Saturday now, so we're trying that out. It worked, it worked out pretty well the other day, except for it was at 6 a.m. my time. Uh, it was I, I made a mistake. I said I told the team 9 Eastern, and I meant 9 Pacific. Yeah, you meant 12. And Luckily, I was up and I got a notification on my phone. Uh, it's like, you're going live in 10 minutes. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> the, the sun wasn't even out yet. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's dedication right there, folks. Dedication to his craft. Well, we are my Amazon guy. We are a full service marketing agency, but we are much more than that. What else are we, Matt? We are a education Education company. center. Where is it? There it is. Courses. We have courses. We have mag-school.com. You can go and learn everything we talk about here, everything that's on YouTube and uh, train for yourself. We are also uh, always hiring here. You can go to our page, myamazonguy.com. Uh, we have internships, brand managers, IT jobs, PPC, design, sales, social media, all kinds of different positions here. Always hiring, looking for new people. You don't have any Amazon experience or you want to learn more and aren't sure that you're ready to take a full brand management position, we train up internships. These are full paid internships and get you all set up to have a career in Amazon marketing. We, If you need one-on-one -on -one help, you can um, book with one of our lovely coaches. There's myself, Tom, Fran, uh, Faith, Kristen, Joe, John, Marissa. You can ask Stephen a question and there's some cookie sheets. Here we are. Thank you all for joining us today. And uh, Matt, thank you again. We'll see you all next week. Pleasure to be back. Thanks for having me.